I went to see the first Star Wars movie in June of 1977. The thing that I still remember best is the opening sequence where the Imperial class Star Destroyer is moving across the screen. And my first thought was, what society had the capability to build a machine of such grand size? If one wanted to build a Death Star, you didn't build it by launching a bunch of stuff off a planet. You went and got yourself an asteroid and built it from that. You could provide the metals, you have organic compounds, you have water, all the building blocks you would need to build your family Death Star. On my asteroid redirect mission, we're going to go land on an asteroid. This is suicide. There's nowhere to go. That looks pretty good. We're going to go pick up a boulder from the surface, put it in orbit around the moon. We will go and visit it with a crewed mission and bring back samples. We would land there in about 2023. You're not actually going into an asteroid field. They'd be crazy to follow us, wouldn't they? The ability to sense that something's ahead of you and react so quickly. That's, that's a hard problem. Never tell me the odds. Flying quickly through an asteroid field is a problem. Flying more slowly through an asteroid field, yes, you absolutely can do that. We have Dawn that's flying through the main belt asteroids. There's a lot of space between them and we can fly through them. The key technology behind all that is ion propulsion, which of course is the propulsion for sublight spacecraft in the Star Wars series. We actually have four ion engines on the asteroid redirect mission. That's an ion engine. Obviously, those engines have to be very maneuverable. Something that massive to turn like that takes a lot of force. So you need really powerful engines to do that. Ion engines today, they're very low thrust. If you wanted to start going to the stars, you need much more advanced power. So that's where you start talking about fission and then fusion. That's really one of the power systems that, that Star Wars used.